The year 2002 for baseball video games was kind of an uneven year, honestly, and that's because we were still seeing transition in the console battlefield, as it were. We were seeing the last vestiges of Generation 5, the 32-64-bit generation, although we were still seeing some support. 989 Sports gave us MLB 2003 in 2002 with Barry Bonds on the cover here. Not much different than MLB 2001 or 2002. These were basically just roster upgrades at this point, but still Sony was actively supporting the old school PlayStation with MLB and also with NFL game day titles as well. So original PlayStation owners or people who are still on the fence about upgrading to a PS2 or maybe an Xbox or a GameCube still had some sports games to play that were current. We also saw EA still continuing support for the original PlayStation with Madden that year and with FIFA that year. So there was still some sports support for the PlayStation, which was still a pretty big success and a lot of people were still playing it at that point in time. But if you had a Generation 6 console, and again, for those that don't understand the generations, Gen 6 is your Dreamcast, your PlayStation 2, your Xbox, and your GameCube. The Dreamcast was on its way out as well. Those of you who remember video game history will recall that Sega had pulled the plug on the Dreamcast in early 2001 and was transitioning away from exclusive support for the Dreamcast and from being a platform holder or a hardware company to a third-party software company where they were going to support all of the consoles, the PlayStation 2, the Xbox, the GameCube, the Game Boy Advance, whatever there was, Sega was going to try and offer support for it to be able to save the company. So the Dreamcast was on its way out. The original Xbox was still trying to kick around with titles like MLB Inside Drive and some other first party, along with some early third party titles as well. So the Xbox was certainly a way to go in terms of baseball video games. In terms of the PlayStation 2, it had its own share of baseball video games, although it was pretty uneven. Uh, we saw the release, the first release in the MLB Slugfest series. This is MLB Slugfest 2003. This continued the renaissance of arcade sports titles that Midway was going through at the time after successfully resurrecting its NFL Blitz series and after introducing NHL hits as well, which was very popular. MLB Slugfest was yet another tentpole league release and did fairly well, well enough to spawn multiple sequels. So obviously had to do something at that point. Pretty sure this is A-Rod on the cover here, by the way. Um, my opinion of MLB Slugfest 2003 is a mixed one. I like the look. Graphically, it looks very good. I do like the atmosphere and the attitude of the game. It's definitely very in your face, which is Midway or which was Midway's MO for that particular period of time. However, at the same time, I had issues with the game's fielding and with the general pacing of the game, and that would be improved in later sequels. But if you didn't like arcade baseball games, you still had some choices. One of those choices was Triple Play Baseball 2002 for the PS2 as well as for the original Xbox. Now, Triple Play was long in the tooth at this point. Remember, we were going all the way back to the 1996 sports year on the Sega Genesis. That wound up moving on to Generation 5 and for the, uh, for the PlayStation and for the Saturn before moving on to the N64 for one or two games as well. This was the final game in this series, however, and it really did need an overhaul. In 2003, we would get MVP Baseball 2003, the first in a series that many think is one of the best series of baseball games of all time. But we weren't there yet in 2002. This was the guy that we had, and reviews were mixed on this game as well. I think everyone was just ready for a change at this point. In addition to Triple Play Baseball 2002, we did have High Heat Baseball 2002 from 3DO, which was the jump from the original PlayStation and the High Heat Baseball games there. Unfortunately, though, I can't really comment on it as I don't have that game in my library. I've been looking for it for a while and haven't been able to find a good copy, so I'm still working on tracking that down. So the PlayStation and the Xbox had their own baseball games, but the GameCube didn't have much of anything, honestly. Nintendo had elected not to pursue any more Ken Griffey baseball games after the N64 and its pair of games, so baseball was kind of on the outs, honestly, at least until MVP Baseball 2004 and 2005, where EA supported that platform. 
But there was one option, and that is the subject of today's unsealed episode. And that is a game coming from WoW Entertainment called Home Run King. This game is kind of a weird amalgamation or mismatch or mishmash of arcade and simulation gameplay. It feels like an arcade game. It almost feels like a World Series baseball spinoff or derivative. It looks okay for the GameCube, and I think that it plays okay, but it definitely has some flaws. Aside from that, though, this game is now, if you can believe it, 20 years old, and this is a sealed copy. I am going to have a chance to open this and talk about it a little bit. I'm going to try and show you the back of the box here. Hopefully, there's not going to be too much in the way of uh, glare. Going, going, gone from the first pitch on opening day to the final out of the World Series. Home Run King brings all of the fun and excitement of Major League Baseball to the Nintendo GameCube batter up. The graphics do look pretty good, I think, for an early Generation 6 title. I believe, if I remember right, that this runs at 60 frames per second, which is really what you wanted to see, especially after the 30 frames and under period of Generation 5. I think the game looks good. I think it sounds okay. And I do think the basics of gameplay are here. I just think there are a few flaws that keep it from being a top-notch baseball game. So reading some of the other things that are on the back of the case says you can take the field with your favorite MLB stars or create your own players and teams from scratch. As always, whenever there's an opportunity for me to create my own player, I'm going to put myself in the game because that's just the way I roll. I am no athlete in real life, so these games allow me to be the athlete that I always wanted to be. You could slug it out in four game modes, exhibition, season, playoffs, and home run derby, so that's a plus. Pick up and play controls means you'll be smashing records and setting new ones in no time. That's the thing I think I like the most about this game is the accessibility and the ability to pick it up and play it pretty easily. And ultra-realistic stadium models and stunning weather effects bring the game to life. Now remember, this is from 2002. This released, I believe, in March of 2002, so it's a little more than 20 years old now. It does use a GameCube memory card, so you need to have one of those in order to save your stats, as you did for every sports game. So if you have the ability, if you have a GameCube now and you feel like picking this up, make sure you're getting a really good size memory card, like a memory card 1018, I think it's called. That's the one I think you really want to have so you can save all your stats for this game in particular. This does have the MLB and the MLBPA licenses, so you do have not only the official Major League Baseball teams, but also most of the Major League Baseball players as well. So with that being said, let's go ahead and use my Heavenly Sword cutter to open this up. Let's do that. There we go. And let's take the plastic off of here just like this. Hopefully the microphone is picking that up. There we go. All right. There's no other ceiling on here, so I don't have to peel anything else off. So when I open this up, hopefully there's not much movement in here. Oh, cool. All right. So when we open this up, we have the GD-ROM, which is what they call the GameCube discs. We also have the Sega warranty card, and we also have the manual. And we'll, of course, be taking a look at all of these things here. So let's take the manual and the card out. Put that off to the side. So these Sega uh, warranty cards were interesting in that they kind of fold open like this. And just like I've talked about in past videos, there's no postage necessary if you mail it here in the U.S., so that's kind of a plus. Looking for your name, your address, all that happy stuff. Which game did you purchase? So you have to write in the name of the game. Which system is it for? Which of the following consoles do you currently own? Dreamcast, N64, GameCube, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, PlayStation, PS2, and Xbox. Still need to find an Xbox. I have told myself that this is going to be the year finally, that I'm going to hopefully track down an original Xbox to add to my collection. Um, I'm hoping to find one locally because I really worry about shipping, and I'm definitely worried about leaky capacitors with the original Xboxes, but this has to be the year. I really want to get back to playing original Xbox games and collecting for that console, so hopefully that happens. But that's neither here nor there. We'll keep moving here. Your favorite type of game? Action, adventure, arcade, fighting, racing, role-playing, shooter, simulation, sports, or other? I can just answer yes to most of that. How many video games do you purchase or receive in a year? Back then, it was certainly a lot less, but now I don't even want to talk about it. Not going to incriminate myself. Uh, do you own a computer? Yes, obviously, or I wouldn't be recording this episode of Unsealed. 
You have access to the internet. Yes, I think most of us do have it now. But back in 2002, that wasn't necessarily the case. So I think that's important to keep in mind. How at all do you access the internet to play games online, which I really didn't do much then and I don't do much now. And would you want to receive email from Sega so you could fill all that out, send it into Sega, and hopefully be entered to win some cool stuff. Then we get to the instruction manual. Before we do, of course, every new GameCube game came with this precautions booklet, which is just no, no one ever read. Everyone took this and they pitched it. Uh, we're not going to read through that. We are going to take a look at the instruction manual here for Home Run King. And I also want to draw your attention to the game being advertised on the back of the instruction manual, Virtua Striker 2002, a game that I actually picked up at Retro World Expo a few years ago, and I have not played it yet. That's on me. I just haven't had the time, but I know I need to get around to playing this. Um, anything with Virtua in the title coming from Sega, I felt like I had to own and try, especially after the success of Virtua Tennis. So, when we open up the manual, it is in black and white, which is kind of a letdown, I'll be honest. But when you take a look, you can see some screenshots here, and they don't look too bad for stills. Um, hardware setup. Progressive scan. So this supports progressive scan, which is interesting. Save files. Only 34 files are needed to save this game. I, f I didn't realize it was that small. So maybe a memory card 1018 is not necessary. You could get just a straight up memory card and you'd be fine. Uh, we get to take a look at the gameplay screen showing what does what where and what means what when. Um, I have never been a big fan of batting cursors, but that's just what this game uses. You do get used to it, I think but I'm more accustomed to the timing swing rather than aiming with a batting cursor. Uh, All-Star Baseball is the same kind of way, but I turn that off. There is an option to turn that off and just use timing only. And once I found that out for All-Star Baseball 2002, that game became a lot more enjoyable for me. So modes of play here. Um, actually, we don't get to that yet. We talk about pitching. Throw a fast pitch, slow pitch, shifting outfield and infield positions. The thing about this game is the play controls are not very intuitive. You actually do kind of have to get used to them a little bit. It's not as simple as some other baseball video games are. That doesn't make it bad, mind you, but there is a little bit of a learning curve to the play controls. You got to keep that in mind when you're playing this game. It kind of argues a little bit against the pick up and play aspect of it. But honestly, once you learn the buttons and what does what, and it really just takes a few innings to do that, then the game becomes second nature. It is not overly complicated, but it's not intuitive either. You need time to be able to adjust to these things. And it does mention, as you can see, it does mention the batting cursor, which I've talked about already, and I'm not going to harp on that all that much. So exhibition mode is here. Uh, what else do we have? Evaluation of your performance. This is interesting. At the end of the game, your performance in the game is evaluated and you are given points based on the evaluation. If your points are among the top 10 or best ever using the selected team, you can enter your initials on the record screen. So this lends itself to being more of an arcade kind of experience, which I like. Uh, if you only want to play a pickup game here or there and be evaluated, I think that that can be fun. But if you want to sink more time in, then you can play season playoffs mode where you can invest in a team and do things with lineup changes and roster changes and get a little bit more in depth with that. And again, we do see some of the screenshots here. Again, I think that they look okay. Uh, nothing earth shattering in 2022, but I do think back in 2002, they were pretty impressive. And the thing that leaps out at me, at leaps out at me the most with this game is just that it does run at 60 frames per second. And when you're coming off of gen five, when everything was a lot choppier and it was because of uh, because of technology limitations, that was the big leap. That was the big generational leap, moving from 30 frames to 60 frames more often than not, I think was a pretty big deal. Uh, we also saw sharper graphics in terms of texture mapping and in terms of depth uh, and in terms of sharpness. I think that we saw big changes there in Gen 6 as opposed to Gen 5. Home Run Derby is here as well, which I think very highly of. If you just want to kind of pick up and play real quick, see how far you can hit the baseball, it's always nice to have that option. And of course, in a game called Home Run King, that certainly makes sense to have. You can edit all-stars, you can edit teams, you can create your own players. Uh, so there's a lot of customization here for those of you that want to make your own experience. And even if you want to put the time in 
to create rosters that are based on 2022 teams, you certainly could take the time to do that if you were so inclined to do so. You can change game settings, although, again, the batting cursor is a constant. You can't get rid of that. You can't make that go away. There's also a record screen here. You can keep track of your championship rings, your home run derby records, your exhibition rankings, and more. So if you're a stat head like I am, that is a screen that you'll visit pretty often. And then for whatever reason, there is a notes page here. So if you wanted to keep track of the first home run you ever hit, you certainly could write that in the notes page. So that's a look at Home Run King for the GameCube, the first baseball game for the console, really, uh, other than All-Star Baseball 2002, which also came out right around launch period. But that's more simulation aspected. This really tries to walk the line more between arcade and sim, and that's why it stands out to me in terms of baseball offerings. After Home Run King and the All-Star Baseball series, we would see MVP 2004 and especially MVP Baseball 2005, which many laud as one of the best baseball games ever made. That would make its way to all consoles, the Xbox, the PS2, and of course, the Nintendo GameCube. So that's a look at baseball and a look at Home Run King for the GameCube. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Unsealed. I know I sure did. I hope to do another episode soon. I do have a pair of title Legends games to get to. I have some other sports games to get to as well. Some PlayStation games to open when I can too as we make our way to episode number 200, which I'm hoping to get to later this year. Thanks for watching, everybody. Until the next time, take care of yourselves and each other. We'll do it again soon.